Kenya was transitioning from a period dotted with division, marinated by the political rivalry between Mike Kibaki and Raila Odinga, to a decade that will see Uhuru Kenyatta take over from his tribesmen. Between 2003 and 2012, the son of Kenya's first president watched and waited for an opportunity to take a second stab at the house on the hill. And as Mike Baki neared the end of his reign, the prospect of him becoming president will grow and grow. Just as the country was struggling to unite. A lot of people turned out to save Uhuru. Actually, it was a saving Uhuru move. Tonight. Part two of our distinctive series. An in-depth look at Kenya's divisive political landscape. I am the Kenyan historian, and this is Kenya's Great Divide. It is exactly one week to the general election on March 4th, and tonight we'll be hearing again from the eight presidential candidates. February 2013, a historic presidential debate will be held in Kenya. We are going to be talking about the question of land. For instance, my friend Uhuru Kenyatta, the family is one of the largest, if not the largest, landowners in Kenya. Such a person would be less suited to implement the uh, what people expect of the land um, whatever and to go further there are some his running mate is also in court over a land that was is allegedly grabbed from an idp mr kenyatta do you own or your family at least own half of kenya and, do, and what do you have to say about what uh, miss karua just talked about um i think i'll begin by saying i'll be very keen for uh, my honorable sister here to, to, to take me to that land because, you know, then maybe I can begin doing something about it. Uhuru knew exactly what was coming his way and he was ready for it. is an issue that we have these extensive tracts of land, half provinces. Today my sister is talking about half the country. He has been in charge of this government for the last five years as prime minister. The minister of lands was appointed by him to date. There is nothing that they have put forward to prove those justifications. There is enough land for each one of its needs, but there is not enough land for each one's greed. With 2013, it was something that it was felt to be new and an opening to perhaps like having open dialogue and having open dialogue in a platform with everyone who is competing against each other. That's something that's so futuristic and progressive. It's to show that you can stand on the pl same platform, not have the same issues or agree on the same things, but you are able to conversate in a mature manner without necessarily leading to incitement and violence. So I was hopeful in 2013. It was a second debate and will cement Uhuru's view on media. We are not treating this man as a candidate you are making, putting him aside as something special to be attacked. That happened. And uh, it might explain why he almost rejected, refused to participate in the second debate. I don't know whether you remember that. There, there, there was a boycott. They were saying, there was a boycott. We, are, we, are not, we cannot be this. Either it's a proper debate for everybody, and everybody gets equal time and equal questions. Eh? So in the second debate, it was a little fairer, but there was that impression that they were out to get him. Now, the media um, tries very hard to be 
to be honest, to be fair. But we also know that there are forces in the media that direct uh, or give guidance as to which way, especially on political issues. Before the debate, Uhuru and his running mate, William Samoe Arapruto, had to fend off sustained efforts against their candidature. What so I guess I, I want to get to, is it feasible, to, is it practical uh, to let, be... Let me get to you. Let me get to you. All right. That first and foremost, we have accepted to follow due process. Due process states, right, that you are actually innocent. Until right? proven guilty. Until proven guilty. Guilty. I'm talking about the Second, practicality here um, getting, of defending I'm, yourself while I'm also getting, being getting, in the office of president. We are a democracy. Kenya is a democracy. There is no uh, uh, um, um, statement anywhere, even by the ICC itself, that says that we are not eligible, right, to stand for office, right? I, as we move on. It's not about the Second, question of eligibility. I'm, 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 I'm getting to you. Okay, if, if, answer my question. Uh, let, let, me, let, right. me, let, me, let, me, let me let me get to you. So therefore, right, even as we continue to face these charges, right, we will still continue to appear. The affairs of government, right? But there could be a, fa a power vacuum as soon as there, you're inaugurated, if you have to go back and forth to the Hague. You know, the, the, absolutely, those hearings last months over Kenyatta. How are you going to do it? There is absolutely no power vacuum because one thing that people if always tend to forget... If the president and vice president are at the Hague and not in the country... One thing people tend to forget is that Kenya is not a banana republic. <laughs> Tunasema never, never again shall Kenyans lose lives or property destroyed on account of political competition. Uhuru's clash with the media and the international community began on the 16th of December 2010. Barely four months after the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution, the International Criminal Court came calling. William Ruto and Henry Kosgi, leaders of the Orange Democratic Party movement, uh, began preparing a criminal plan to attack those identified as supporters of the Party of National Unity. More names were to follow in what looked like a balancing act. Mr. Kenyatta's role was to facilitate the activities of the, of the Mungiki, and Mr. Mudaura and Ali's role was to let them to commit the crimes. Please be seated. <coughs> My name is Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, born 26th October 1961, and I am currently the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance of the Republic of Kenya. The, the, the country was already divided, you know, from the time the, that Ocampo said, these are my, the people I want to lock up. And the people said, wait a minute, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was in that division that Uhuru and Ruto saw an opportunity. <laughs> Lakini leo inasemekana mimi ndiyo nilikuwa naongoza vita na mimi mwenyewe hakuna lolote nilikuwa natafuta isipokuwa kiti yangu ya katundu sawa. And the opportunity was eliciting resentment and weaponizing the ICC indictment. Lakini bado inasemekana mimi ndiyo mwongozi wa vita impunity. The message that we were receiving is this is an attack on individuals and these individuals belong to certain communities and these are our people, they are our own. So because of that narrative that this is my person, this is our own, it did not come across as something where they are being held accountable for actions. It came across as if they were being targeted and not just targeted, targeted unfairly. Their suitability to vie for the country's top seat was questioned and some wanted them barred from the ballot with Uhuru and Ruto facing crimes against humanity at the International Criminal Court. 
tushirikiane pamoja mwaka huu wa uchaguzi tukiwa wanajubilii i consider it the height of impunity to appear to be taking a court of law for granted and to be just stamping and saying irregardless uh, because you don't know what they will say the court might even order an arrest the g10 on behalf of the women of kenya will not even hesitate to take such measures as shall be required to ensure that we respect we protect and defend this constitution the country itself was already polarized over the icc that it was not fair the reason it was not fair was because it was a political move which was aimed at influencing the 2012 election. Mwenye kusema ni kesho? Ati mwenye kusema ni kesho? Vijana mungu? Mambo? Mungu pamoja. As the country prepared for the 2013 polls, the ICC became the very fabric that united Uhuru and Ruto. They joined hands to form the Jubilee Coalition with Uhuru as the presidential candidate and William Ruto, his running mate. What are you are people? Their rallying call, Unity. And so that's when you begin to see this sense of cohesion and unity amongst, com amongst communities where they're not necessarily asking the tough questions based on evidence, they're asking questions based on narratives and propaganda that they view. Walikuwa wanangojea mimi na uhuru tusiwe hapa ndiyo wapigiwe kura. Lakini unajua mungu hali chakula kwa mtu yeyoti. We looked at the numbers and we knew, yeah, this is the next government, to be very honest. But then uh, we knew there would be a lot of challenges. Uh, you remember many people were saying, oh, Akiku cannot be a president again. So there was need to also rebrand, repackage, remove that tag of Akikuyu again. Uhuru Kenyatta wasn't the only one who used the country's division. Railo Dinga did it too. He pushed statements that exploited the divide. Wengine wanachukua maidadi ya watu ati kabila hii ikiungana na kabila hii na kabila hii inatosha gari sisi tunasema makabila yote ya Kenya wako ndani ya code habari yako over the years i've been greatly moved by the warmth and spirit the strength and resolve of the kenyan people and i've been grateful for my connection to kenya U.S. President Barack Obama saw through the division and decided to send a message. We all know what makes for successful elections. Kenya must reject intimidation and violence and allow a free and fair vote. Kenyans must resolve disputes in the courts, not in the streets. But political fights will escalate. Ocampo and ICC is not the solution of this country. Moreno Ocampo cannot resolve our problems. He's just but a prosecutor. Uhuru and Raila supporters loved the conflict. They laid and executed plans to keep the conflict going. Kwa watu wa Nyanza, sisi hatuna shida, tuko tayari kuungana pamoja na hawa. 
shida yetu ni mtu mmoja tu peke yake. Province nzima ni mtu mmoja tu peke yake tuko na shida jameni. Na huyo mtu anaitwa nani? Anaitwa nani? Anaitwa nani? Amen. Hiyo ndio kuna shida nyingine sisi tuko nayo. Kwa sababu huyo ndio ametuletea furugu ambazo tumeona katika taifa letu la Kenya. Nikiwaambia yale mtomo hiyo yake imetoa juu yangu kutoka mwaka wa 2002 vile yamesema yangu kwa ile mkutano yote ameenda na sijawahi kuona hawa watu wa magazeti wakisema wakati huo ya kwamba ameongea vibaya lakini wakati mimi nimesema nimechoka na lazima nitamjibu sasa inasemekana mimi naendelea kueneza hate against a man say what you may i must do what i must the people of kenya must come together before and after the election to carry on the work of building your country. The choice of who will lead Kenya is up to the Kenyan people. The United States does not endorse any candidate for office, but we do support an election that is peaceful and reflects the will of the people. Kenya. <laughs> On election day, Uhuru and Ruto's intensive campaigns paid dividends. Their central and Rift Valley bases narrowly put them beyond the reach of Raila Odinga and his running mate, Kalonzo Msioka, according to official results by the electoral body. I thought that it was quite close. I thought that it was neck and neck. Um, so I knew that the results would be close. I'm not very surprised. And the, the, the West actually helped Uhuru. Because when they came out blazing, warning Kenyans not to elect Uhuru and Ruto, it was too blatant. So you had a voter reaction against imperial design. So that was that's what it appeared. So when you have um, somebody, Christian Turner, the new British High Commissioner, and he started talking very badly, immediately, saying that there will be you elect these people, there will be limited contacts. You know, they don't uh, don't expect to deal with us the normal way. No way. So people say, and who is this Mzungu? Then um, Johnny Carson made things worse. People should be thoughtful about the impact that their choices have uh, on their nation, on their region, on the economy, on the society, and the world in which they live. Choices have consequences. The message was very clear that uh, Uhuru is an indictee. And if he's an indictee, he's an international criminal. And you don't go around electing criminals. It helped to catapult people more than if they had not interfered. It, and that was just numbers of the presidential, not numbers of having the house. And that's why you remember now, uh, they needed to, after, have coalitions to bring in numbers. After a polarizing campaign, the Uruto pair needed acceptance speeches that pointed in which direction they wanted Kenya to go. President Uhuru Kenyatta and I decided three years ago 
that we were going to work together. It was not about winning an election. It was about bringing communities from across our regions that had been quarreling and fighting for years, not only to work together, but to live together as Kenyans. Our nation has now successfully navigated the most complex general election in our history. Achieving peace and strengthening unity will be the goal of my government. This work begins now. Our first nominee. But the unity call was tainted on this day, the day they named Uhuru's first government. His cabinet will be dominated by members from Uhuru's Kikui community and Ruto's Kalenjin community. People felt, okay, it's a new constitution, yes, but these are just two tribes, the Kikuyu, the Kalenji. And true, there were two tribes, with a few now coming from northeastern, with a few um, in 2013, the majority, 80% was from the, the region of uh, Central and uh, the region of Rift Valley. We had very few people coming from other regions. And again, looked just the same way we were divided with Kibaki, again we ended up having that division. And you, know, you remember, in Kibaki's time, it was Kalonzo who now came in to just soften the ground and make things work. Experts say Uhuru and Ruto did not seize abuse of power, but merely modified their tactic. Uh, Uhuru Kenyatta had a problem. It appeared as if he had not been ready to form the government. He won the election, so it took about two or so months before he announced a cabinet. That in itself was an indication of lack of readiness. And so if there was that impression that he was not ready to take the government, that gives opening to the other side, so we can fix him. Eh? With Uhuru failing to galvanize the country, Rilo Dinga and his court coalition saw an opportunity. And the opportunity was to ensure President Kenyatta and his team failed to deliver on their promises. Wanataka kuwaondoa uongozini ndio tunataka lakini tutatumia katiba We shall only do so lawfully Kenya is a country that appreciates a lot of hybrid things and people love it that way that to do a hybrid in government people will thank that they will work with the government they will support the government but you bring in this uh, the winner take it all uh, agenda it is the most sad thing for Kenya because that is how we fight. So that's when the reality began to sink in that this is not necessarily something that is for the unity of all Kenyans and it was based on political candy. Those who did well during the campaign are the ones who were rewarded and now it was so obvious when he entered power. As much as it was his win and it was very, very close, that means that there's still a large number of people in the country who don't want to be under his leadership. So he had a lot of work to do in terms of creating some form of unity and cohesion, but he also had to fight an opposition that technically, after that election, became stronger became even stronger because now it motivated supporters 
that in the next one, we have to do better. In the next one, we have to show up because this time around, we just missed it. We are talking about an all-inclusive government. And before long, ukiwa umetoka inchi yako unaenda kutembea inchi ingine kusema wale ambao wanaongoza huko wangestahili kufungwa. Si ukuje hapo utuambia hapa Kenya kwetu. Lakini bado kuna watu ambao hawafurahi dunia ikitulia. Kwa sababu siasa zao ni siasa za kuchemusha watu kuweka chuki matusi ni kama watu watakula matusi. Na ndio nasema saa nyingine mimi sijui kama watu wanafikiria yale wanasema au wanajua. Unataka tu uongozi. Atafunga huyo ndio ati mimi nitijitengenezee barabara. Hakuna barabara. Mungu ndio anapanga barabara ya kila mtu. Uwezi ujipangie kwa kutakia mwenzako mabaya. Eh. Hey. Omba Mwenyezi Mungu na uombe wananchi kwa njia tulivu. Uoneshe sera zako tofauti ya sera zako na sera za wale wengine. I don't think that he expected where now while you're trying to implement you're sort of dealing with individuals who don't want you in that position. So he focused a lot more in terms of how can I make the environment easier for myself and how can I make it more um, relatable to me. So I think that most of the times the president was more concerned about muting fires, uh, which is understandable because entering in a position like that is difficult and putting trust back in people and trust in your leadership. Those are, those are competitions are health. Those are political parties competition. But if you look at the, the tension, the muzzling and mistreatment of the opposition leaders, like what happened to Kaila, the denial of losing an election by the opposition when they have even lost through fair and square. Uh, all this is because our politics is ethnic based, because our politics is regional, regional based. And more was to come, precipitated by massive corruption allegations that followed. During Uhuru's first term, stealing of public funds almost became normal. Overnight billionaires emerged as tenderpreneurs literally captured the state. It started with the NYS scandal that saw 791 million shillings looted from the taxpayer. First, Uhuru and Ruto defended then devolution CS Anwai Guru. Nandipo tuasema, tuwache siyasa kwa maendeleo. Siyasa ikifika tutapambana tu hakuna shida. Wakati waki okifika. Hatutaki vijana wa, wa Kenya eti waitwe wakora, wahuni, ati ni milisha. Vijana wa Kenya ndio watakao badilisha taifa letu la Kenya tuende mbele. But as inquiries continued, more revelation will surface, putting the president and his deputy in a dark corner for defending what appeared like an apparent case of theft. But surely, if a hairdresser registers 20 companies, gets contracts, is paid millions, and then you want to tell us eh, stories, oh, you know, this is, the, please, give us a break. So intriguing was the plunder that people involved allegedly carried money in sacks. 
kuingereza mingi mnazofanyia catwalk hapa around na ni wazi pesa ya umma imepotea mwenye hiyo pesa anasema aliweka kwa gunia sasa jameni kweli dunia hii you know we must be honest with ourselves that we must be honest with ourselves and we will call a spade a spade the, the nys um, was not good for the president it came to a point where it could not be done anymore and she had to leave it was only the beginning corruption had taken root in the jubilee administration talk of scandals like eurobond the sgr land compensation saga the five billion afia house scam and many more it's also a period when he was talking about even having big four and things like that but then it still seemed that there were a lot of corruption cases and scandals because it's also a period where our newspapers were filled with cases so people were losing hope so where the failure or where the rain started beating was when accountability was lost out the window they were political dynamite and uhuru appeared like a man under siege when we go out there and we say Euroban money was stolen and is stashed in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, are you telling me that the Treasury and the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States have colluded? Yani mujinga ni nani? Tunajenga dam ya Itare hapa na Kuru. Tunajenga dam ya Karemenu kule Kiambu County. Tunajenga dam ya Aror na Kimwarer kule katika sehemu ya Elgeyo Marakwet. Hizo dams zote tunajenga tumefuata utaratibu mmoja. And we are a competent government. Most of these dam projects either did not take place or have stalled. Corruption stories only infuriated the head of state. He viewed them as black men. Eh, na huyu anasema anaenda nataka kwenda ku, ku interrogate eh, <laughs> Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Guy, anyway. <laughs> you know, you sit back and you ask yourself, <laughs> are we being serious with what we are doing? Are we really being serious? Au ni mchezo tu kwa sababu gazeti itaandika pale. He had concluded that the press had sources that undermined his presidency. His assumption was that the opposition and the civil society was using the media to turn the public against him. He raged against the mainstream media. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? We have we, 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 we have the Auditor General keep saying money was stolen from Eurobon, Eurobon. I say, I did not appoint you. <laughs> All right? I cannot sack you. What is your problem? Say, 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 nonsense to tell you the truth why can't you just say if it's the inspector general he is amefanya makosa hii na hii prosecute him the fact that there may have been some people who did strange things and they seem to get away with it if they did get away with it affected the delivery of his promises um, yes he fired a few people yeah? we know he fired a few ministers yeah? Some of them are still very influential. <laughs> Others are crying somewhere else. But that did not change the image. If anybody thinks they can walk in the final term of Uhuru with uh, anything that smells of corruption, I'm very sorry of him. I know this is somebody who will go even after his own friends like David Morade. If I ever get involved in anything in the next term, that will be his legacy. Across the country, one study shows corruption costs Kenyans 250,000 jobs every year because every shilling that's paid as a bribe could be put into the pocket of somebody who's actually doing an honest day's work.
the gap between the poor and the rich would widen further. Inequality was so visible that even US President Barack Obama noticed it upon his visit in 2015. Today, a young child in Nyanza province is four times more likely to die than a child in Central province. That's a gap that has to be closed. A girl in Rift Valley is far less likely to attend secondary school than a girl in Nairobi. That's a gap that has to be closed. He wanted the fabric that holds Kenya together to be made even stronger ahead of the 2017 elections. The single most thing that divides the people of Kenya it's, are its leaders and their political parties. Political parties became ethnic based, became regional based. By then, talk of ODM, pre predominantly was more of a Luo Nyanza party. Talk of uh, URP with even myself not coming from Rift Valley, it was viewed within the lenses of a Rift Valley. TNA, that of uh, Mount Kenya region, you know, Waipa, uh, an Okambani party. That time there was no ANC, but there was uh, the UD, UDF of, uh, of Musalia, Devadi, and Ford Kenya. <laughs> So we said, let's collapse, and we collapse 12 parties into one single party. 12 of, you can imagine 12 of parties, some of them with over 75 members of parliament, that is for URP and TNA. Collapse them into one party called Jubilee, with a symbol of a handshake, Tuko Pamoja. Sisi chama chetu ni chama ya kitaifa. Sisi ni chama ambaye haina ukabila. Sisi tunaambia wa Kenya tarehe 17 kuna uchaguzi. Na kwa sababu uhuru Kenyatta ni rais utakuwa na amani ya kutosha. Kenya itakuwa salama na uamuzi wa Kenya utaheshimu. That membership of 170 was coming from 43 out of the 47 counties. So we only, we only missed four counties. And that was the county of Siaya, county of Kisumu, county of uh, Oma Bay, and another county. Unfortunately, uh, there are those within the Jubilee Party who felt that let us just have a duopoly of two communities and the moment you try to bring the, these other communities, then it disrupts the political arithmetic that was potent enough to get the presidency. Now look at how we thought when we were coming in 2013 that because of devolution, people will not think so much about the presidency. Look at 2017, how we fight because of the presidency. It means we did not cure the same problem we thought from the old constitution, we are coming to cure. That is why again we have gone back, we have now balkanized ourselves here. We want to fight and everything now again, instead of people thinking we have counties, we have governors, we can work with them and transform our counties, we are still thinking all our help is from where? The presidents. <laughs> Still angry at how IEBC staged the 2013 presidential election, the opposition will push for the removal of IEBC commissioners led by Chairman Isaac Hassan. Weekly protests will set the country on a divisive path. The opposition had convinced its support base that Uhuru's election in 2013 was not credible and that IEBC under Isaac Kassan was not fit to conduct the forthcoming elections. A people united can never be defeated. To make to a bomb, to make a bomb. 
It was in 2016, just a year before the 2017 polls, and the country was simply divided. Wakijaribu kuharibu mboga za wakina mama kwa barabara. Wakijaribu kuchoma vioski vya watu. Wakijaribu kuvunja maduka ya watu. Wakijaribu kupiga mawe magari ya wenzao. Wakijaribu kusimamisha wa Kenya ambao wana haja ya kwenda kazi. Ndiyo watajua ya kwamba kuna serikali. Eh. Everyone from the ruling Jubilee Coalition to the opposition coalition NASA was preaching water but drinking wine. They were simply promising unity but sowing hate. So the country going to 2017 was as divided as it was in 2012. There are those who are the 40 percent who are for Raila and the others who may have a problem with him. We also have the international agenda. Again, it played itself in 2017. And come election day, Jubilee's intensified campaign paid off. Uhuruto was re-elected for a second term. Most of the votes that uh, Uhuru Kenyatta got was through direct influence of William Ruto. And uh, I've had many people saying, uh, uh, the president could have gotten on all. It is, it is a lie. This country, you, you can't, uh, you could not have, Uhuru could not have gotten those votes without the campaign and support of Dr. William Ruto. When you look at the number of rallies we did and the number of rallies they did, we did so many rallies to convince Kenyans. We saw the dividend. For the first time in 2017 general election, Jubilee got the highest number of members of parliament, 172. It has never happened, even maybe during the one-party system. It, Jubilee joined the League of ANC, you know? Jubilee joined the League of the, the Labour Party, or the Conservative Party, or the Republican Party, or the Democratic Party. That was the, the footsteps that the Jubilee wanted Jubilee to, to follow. And secondly, of course, any political party, we formed Jubilee because we wanted to take over power. We wanted to be in power through a democratically elected government. And we had prepared our own succession policy. And you remember President Huru used to say, Yake Kumi, na William, William Ruta Kumi. The celebrations, though, will be temporarily put on hold as the Supreme Court under Chief Justice David Maraga annulled the election results. The court was satisfied that the first respondent committed irregularities and illegalities inter alia in the transmission of results rendering the declared results invalid, null, and void. If we didn't have this new constitution, we would have just gone back to our trend of 207. But thank God we had this new constitution that looked at, nullified, and told us to go back to honor an election. The court has made its decision, we respect it, we don't agree with it, and again, fellow Kenyans, I say peace. Machako Station Hamjambo! Nairobi Hamjambo! Kuna wale wanafikiria, ya kwamba sasa tumebabaika, Ate tutaenda serikali ya nusu mkate. Na ataka niseme mchana kwa mchana hakuna serikali ya nusu mkate. Hakuna serikali ya nusu mkate. Musema kweli ni dede. Uhuru mas. Uhuru mas. Uhuru mas. But Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musyoka will boycott the repeat presidential election. Hapa kaunti ya wasingishu tunasema wembe.
The rest of the country, for a long time since independence, we have become a victim of the two major tribes, political competition and tension between the Kikuyu and the, the Luo, and more so between the Kenyatta and the Odinga family. If you see the people who are in Uhuru Park swearing in uh, Hondoboraila Odinga, 95% were from one community. If you see the people who are annoyed with that scenario, might be Jubilee supporters, but more so people from Mount Kenya region. As President of the Republic of Kenya. In full realization of the high calling. In full realization of the high calling. I assume as Deputy President of the I, Republic of Kenya. I assume as Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. It was fulfilling uh, for us, especially people who support William Ruta, because we knew that uh, if President Uhuru Kenyatta secures his term, which he did, it would have been a platform, the, the Jubilee development successes would have been a platform for Dr. William Samoy Ruta to campaign in 2022. So from where we sit, it was uh, exciting, it was, it was a, a, a confirmation and commitment and covenant of Kenyans that they were saying that Jubilee, you have done well in the second term, first term and you need second term to continue the transformation agenda. <laughs> The repeat presidential election will be conducted in a tensed environment with violence being witnessed in some parts of the country. It had set tone on what was to follow. Odinga was back to what he does best, antagonism. <laughs> In full realization of the high calling, assume the office of the People's President of the Republic of Kenya. On the 30th of January 2018, he gave his best what they had come to expect. And then he attacked the Jubilee administration and the electoral body for conducting what he called a shambolic election. Today's step is one step towards the doing away with electoral autocracy. But as questions lingered over what happened and the consequences, the glue that held together the ruling Jubilee party was melting. We went for the first PG after being sworn in. That is when the uh, committees of the House and House leadership was being formed. Uh, when we went there, we were, uh, we were shocked that the president was very abrasive, was very aggressive, was uh, talking with a lot of quarreling, insulting us, saying we can't dictate to him anything, we, we, we need to do our job. And it was not a, a very, I would not say it was a pleasant experience. I wouldn't want to use many words, but it was not a very brilliant experience. Looking that this was our party leader, our president that we had campaigned for, voted for, ensured he got his re-election, uh, but in, uh, after the nullification by the Supreme Court. So we were shocked. And uh, from then on, uh, we noticed the telltale signs that all was not going to be well for too long. Ruto, kila weekend, tanga 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 kila pahali. 
atakuwa anapitia hizi machorochoro akiona kuna kitu inaenda kona kona mumwambie si namna hiyo si namna hiyo tuhakikishe kazi ya wananchi imefanyi tumekubaliana ni wangapi wamesema tuwache siaza twende kazi he was not happy about everybody he was mad at everybody and that is when he went to form a pseudo government with opposition on 9th of march 2018 the unthinkable happened uhuru kenyatta and Raila Odinga put aside their differences and agreed to work together. Uh, it caught the deputy president unawares and that made him angry. Sasa wale nataka niwaambie hamuwezi kunifukuza ODM ati mkanifuata ati mnanifukuza Jubilee haiwezekani. Hiyo hiyo haiwezekani bwana. What was discussed and agreed upon remained a mystery, but the handshake between Uhuru and Raila became a sword that split the president and his deputy. Ati wanajibanga huko porojo fitina o tutavunja jubilee watavunja watavunja jubilee ya nani? Hiyo ni ndoto ya mchana nani? Hiyo msahau kabisa. It appeared as if accommodating Raila uh, would mean a reduction of some um, DP activities or influences uh, because you now have um, a new player in the, in the field and uh, the president's problem was to keep the two of them balanced eh? <laughs> and increasingly then the DP appears as if he's uh, becoming less and less important in the whole thing um, and um, as that was happening you have Raila appearing to becoming more and more important to the point where as if he had taken over the, the role of the, deep, the DP. President Kenyatta, for the first time in the history of the world geopolitics, I've studied major democracies where a president elected by a majority political party and his transiting leadership is busy organizing the opposition to take over from him and forgetting his legacy. Uhuru Kenyatta has assured the country that this was not a platform to use to give power to Raila. But from where, uh, where we are, you can tell. The telltale signs are that the handshake, the real intention, was to ensure that they frustrate the deputy president, to ensure that he does not become president of this republic. After the 2017 elections, and after the 2013 elections, and after the 2007 elections, there were enough people in Kenya talking about secession. The president won with about 53 point something percent and Raila got to 46 percent. In our context, that's almost 46 percent is almost 50 percent. And you and me know, and maybe I could ask you, what, what, what would happen if after that swearing in of Raila, by a very forensic support base who felt that they have no way of ever getting into the mainstream of government. If that Francis crowd decided that they were going to storm State House, and State House, GSU, and everybody else decided to defend itself, would have a, a bloodbath. But that would even be a smaller bloodbath if you compare with what would obtain if that crowd shouting Tialala were to meet with the crowd of the Nairobi business community would even have more bloodshed. Energized by Odinga's backing, Uhuru launched a calculated onslaught against the DP. First, he chopped off his influence in government and made Interior CS Dr. Fred Matangi a super minister of some sort. Dugu yangu amesimama kidete, tumesaidiana, na tutaendelea kusaidiana, Hata tukiangalia siku za usoni tutakuwa tukiangalia pamoja siku ile mimi nauliza nyinyi siku ile uhuru kenyata alikuwa anataka mwana, anataka mwanaume akusimama na yeye muliana mupi ya kitenda wili muliana ule watamelo muliana hao sahi wanazunguka zunguka hapa okay karibuni the tension that was in the country the violence that uh, was occasioned in some parts of the country 
And uh, the fact that we were in a very uncomfortable situation as a country between uh, the uh, election, both elections, and actually all the way through till January. And it was upon seeing a possibility of another crisis erupting similar to the one that we saw in 2007. I decided that this country doesn't deserve that. Uhuru will stop appearing together with Ruto in public. It will be the beginning of what was to follow. The fight against corruption was then launched. Cabinet ministers, governors and other government officials suspected of corruption were targeted in this war. A majority of those who fell by the wayside were either Ruto's friends, allies or supporters and so his team argued. The intention has always been to ensure they intimidate people around the deputy president. We agree that corruption must be fought by it because there are structures that fight corruption. There is the ESCC, there is DCI, there is the judiciary. We should allow the, 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 the law to take its course. But these people are weaponizing the fight against corruption to undermine the people uh, associated with deputy president. The president has so far openly attacked his deputy on matters corruption. And it would be really the honorable thing that if you are not happy with it, uh, that you would actually, you know, uh, step aside and allow those who want to move on, move on, and then take your agenda to the people, which is what happens in any normal, you know, democracy, because you can't have your cake uh, <laughs> and, 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 and eat it, yeah? You know, you can't on the one hand say, I'm not going, and because I, at the same time, I don't agree. You know, you, you've got to decide, because you, you must be principled in, 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 in that endeavor. Yeah? Um, uh, that, that's what happens in a, in, a, in, a, in a democracy, so that you don't confuse people. With Uhuru literally having thrown him out of the bus, Ruto decided to fight his second term agenda, the BBI project. Mulikuwa munataka kubadilisha katiba kwa sababu mulikuwa munataka kutengeneza rais pepari. Mutu ambaye atayenda bunge, achagwe wa bunge, wawe ma, mawaziri, ili aweze kukontrol bunge. Mulikuwa munataka kuweka rais ambaye atatumia ile ombudsman kule judiciary, ili aweze kumanipulate the judiciary. In the BBI provision, there is that every corruption, major, co major corruption case, which steals people's money, those cases must be concluded within two years. It's one of the biggest things. But there are enough people in government, okay, who have got those corruption issues, and they would not want this to be concluded in two years. Lakini kwa sababu mmepatikana na aibu, kwa sababu mmegunduliwa ya kwamba mulikuwa mnataka kuturudisha nyuma, saa hizi mmechanganyikiwa hamutake kusema kulikuwa na ombudsman, hamutake kusema kulikuwa na mawaziri watatoka bunge, hamutake kusema yale mambo maovu ilikuwa imepangwa ndani ya BBI, saa hii munajaribu kutuuzia mambo ya ukora, atio kulikuwa na mambo ya tax holiday. Uhuru and Raila wanted the constitution changed and more positions created with an aim of reducing electoral conflict. That what we have seen in the past, starting all the way from when we started multi-party politics and the violence that we see in elections, the divisions that we see in the country, the ethnic animosity that we see in the country, that if we started dealing with some of these issues, maybe some of this thing would disappear. That was what BBI was supposed to represent. And it is most unfortunate, like I keep saying, that people have forgotten why we were looking at this. And for short-term political gain, have decided to deny Kenyans of what is legitimately in their interest. In the BBI agenda, Ruto saw an opportunity to hit back at the president, using mostly legislators from Uhuru's backyard of central Kenya, the DPE launched and sustained attacks against the BBI. Unajua walituambia nobody can stop reggae. Sindio? Wakasahau kuna mungu binguni. 
Nyaururu ni hasla nation ama ni kitendawili. He called the agenda a selfish move that only sought positions for the powerful at the expense of real issues affecting Kenyans. Stop the contempt. Stop the nonsense. Even though you want a president who will protect the wealth that some of us have, but the citizens of Kenya want a president who will first prioritize the creation of jobs for millions of young people in Kenya. Ruto's defiance heavily punctured their ailing relationship. And when the court stopped the BBI reggae, Ruto danced and laughed at the president and Odinga. And we said if we don't deal with some of these issues, people will consistently feel pent up. And that is why we said let us actually focus ourselves on this. Let us do it. It was not about who was going to be president, who was not going to be president. How many times have I told you people, I am very grateful to the almighty God and the people of Kenya for the opportunity they've given me. I am more than happy to serve out my time and finish my program. But I also believe that this is part of my agenda, to be able to bring people together and to be able to ensure that we have a peaceful, stable, united country. As we head into the next general election, the country is already divided. When the truth gets known by the people, you have a reason to fear. What we have seen now is panic within the camp of DP, and that is why they are resorting to violence. But why is he that he's coming? Why is he coming to cause violence in our area? Why can't he cause violence in his area? Why has he got out this region for all the problems and the difficulties? Hata sisi wenyewe wenyeji tujiulize kwa nini tunakuja kupiganishwa? Tunataka siasa ifanywe kwa njia ya amani. Mambo ya kurushiana mawe ni mambo ambayo inarudisha Kenya yetu nyuma. It is primitive and backward for any leader to organize thuggery and hooliganism using the young people of Kenya. The young people of Kenya want jobs. They want to do business. They want to run their enterprises. You cannot misuse them to throw stones so that you can protect your turf as politicians. Though not official, it's not a secret Uhuru Kenyatta is pushing for Railo Dinga to be his successor. It is not my duty nor is it my responsibility to tell people or to tell Kenyans how or where they should vote. But it is my duty to remind Kenyans that they need to look at who they vote for and why they are voting for that particular person. Now, President Kenyatta, and I want to advise him, should be a statesman like President Kibaki. Because what he is trying to do, President Moy tried to force the candidature of Uhuru Kenyatta on the people of Kenya in 2002. And the people rebelled in thousands, regardless of their tribe. Even for the first time, there was convergence because they didn't wanted, they were tired of the leadership of President Moy. So they did not want an extension either through proxy or through his own anointed uh, leader. And like I'm saying, it is unfortunate that within and amongst us, there are those who will sacrifice interest over personal political agendas. And I believe these are the things that Kenyans need to look for. But at the end of the day, it is not for me to dictate to Kenyans who to elect. It is for Kenyans to decide what is in their best interest. This is the Kenyan historian. <laughs>